So now we're going to go ahead and create a symbol from scratch. So opening up our library, we will add a symbol and instead of importing, we'll just name one and this is going to be LED. And there are plenty of LEDs already in libraries that you could use, but I just want to show how we would create one from scratch. So the grid spacing is the first thing I always check. Uh, leave it default when it comes to symbol, only because everything else is also uh, in that same dimensions for symbols and for them to line up and connect properly uh, it's best just to leave it like that so here are layers uh, you can move through different layers they are important to know what each one does uh, for this we'll mostly be just sticking with symbols and a few other layers I'll go into detail with so here's our actual pin this is what will in the schematic represent the uh, footprint and how it connects on the PCB layout you can rotate it by right clicking or you can use this little menu up here uh, or this toolbar. Uh, you can also change the pin length from short, medium, long or point. So I'm going to go ahead and drop two pins since our LED has two connections and it's really cluttered with the pin name so if you highlight it you'll see this inspection on your left. If it's not there just go to view and check mark inspection and I'll change visibility to off. And this just cleans it up a little bit. So now we want to actually draw the symbol that goes along with these pins. The top pin will be the anode, the bottom pin will be the cathode. And selecting line, I will go ahead and draw a line here. Now it's stuck at right angle. The way you change this is right here. Change it to uh, this, gives you angles. And hitting escape will stop it. Now I draw the line down here to represent the cathode. And now I want to uh, draw the little arrows that represent that that differentiate this from an LED and a diode. So to do that, I want to change my grid spacing, but it's still going to be a multiple of the original. That way things just they still line up. And here is the uh, little part of the arrow. Now I'm going to use polygon. The reason I'll use polygon is because it fills it in the shape rather than leaving it empty as a line would do. Now if you want more resolution you can hit your alt key and that will give you the alt alternate dimension or the alternate step. And I will go ahead and just adjust this line right here to uh, make everything nice and perpendicular. There we go. And instead of making a new one, I'll just select this and copy it by using the selection tool, copy. It's important to right click here and do copy group, otherwise you'll just be able to copy only one of those attributes. Now I can copy it, clicking, left clicking will plant it there and there you have it, we have our LED. Now I need to go ahead and make a name. So I will change my layer to names, this is important, don't do everything in the same layer. It's also important to make sure you follow the format. Uh, it's got to be all caps and next to your greater than symbol. And the reasons is there's a macro built into your library that will uh, connect this. You'll see uh, when we make the schematic and uh, it'll allow you to have a uh, rolling uh, name basically uh, that will represent if you have multiples of this same schematic symbol, it'll just spool it out and number it up. Same thing with value, make sure you're in the value layer and we will uh, all caps add value and that's it there you have it we have a LED symbol now from our schematic the only thing we have left is this tactile switch and I'll go ahead and show you how I make this again there's probably one already in the library but it's just as easy sometimes to make it from scratch and uh, make sure you name it something that uh, will help you understand and I like to name things too where there could be reusability so if you have multiple tactile switches that are all single pull single throw we can use the same symbol to represent them even though they physically may be different schematically they're the exact same so this one will just be switch and it's a single pull single throw as you can see from our bomb And uh, looking at the data sheet 
from our bomb manager uh, on DigiKey. We can uh, just verify schematically what they name their pins and we can match it. Now they name the pens B, B prime, A, A prime. However, uh, I'll just stick with numbers. And again, the schematic layout is up to you, how you want to draw it. Uh, it's just a physical representation. So where you drop these pens, uh, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is the amount of pins you have and uh, that they're connected in the right way to your footprint. And I'll go ahead and declutter by uh, just turning the visibility of these pins off. If you want to know what they are, you just highlight it and in the properties it'll show you that's pin 1, here's pin 2. Now B and B prime are connected, so both pins are uh, connected through the switch. So both pins in our schematic will also be connected. So this will, I'll just do this to help me keep track of which one's which. This is super important. If you if you connect B to A in this schematic symbol and and that's how you draw your footprint you will essentially be shorting your switch and it won't be a switch and that kind of mistake happens a lot so it's it's really important I think the number one rule in PCB design is absolutely paying attention to detail so these will be connected and I'm going to change my grid spacing but keeping it still a multiple of the uh, 100 thou or 100 mils or 0.1 inches however you want to say it just so I can get a little more detail in here you're not restricted to the spacing however stick to the uh, a common dimension there so there's different ways of schematically representing a switch but uh, this is a pretty common one and it makes sense to me so We have it this is everything and this is in the symbols layer because this is the symbol now we're going to add the name and I'll do that by selecting text ensuring the greater symbol is at the beginning and then all caps name and then putting a value although there probably isn't going to be a value associated with the switch I think it's just important to maintain uniformity across all your schematic <laughs> symbols they all have a name they all have a value and there you have it we'll save it in the next video we'll move into footprints